And now, broadcasting live by the light of a single swinging bow, deep in an underground bunker marked only by a nondescript entrance, somewhere in rural Oregon. Don't even try to find him. Don't even try. Here's Larry with this week's guest. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Leo's Coast to Coast. Hello, everybody, wherever you may be, from coast to coast and sea to shining sea, it is the return of the Leo's Coast to Coast show after a hiatus of about, oh, what we got, I think, uh, two weeks, right? Hi there, everybody. My name is Larry. It's nice to meet y'all. We're going to have Corporal Craig Ball here on in just a second. Want to welcome everybody. Hello, Arizona. Hi there, South Carolina. Hello, Middle Tennessee. Hello, Crossville, Tennessee. Hello, Lloydminster, Saskatchewan. First time. Nice to see you guys. Thank you. Pennsylvania is here. Hello, Northern California. Hi there, Utah. Hello, my friends in Manitoba. Eastern Tennessee. Winnipeg, Manitoba is here. Hello, Texas. Hello to all my friends here from around the country. I'm just scrolling all these, and I'm like, wow. I know you've been waiting a long time for him to come on the show. Oregon is here. Crossville, Tennessee is in the house. Hello, Corvallis, Oregon. I love you, Corvallis, Oregon. Just just right up the road from me a little bit. Chucky, Tennessee is here. Hello. Hello, Chucky. Is that right? Love it. Chucky, Tennessee. What a great name. Cool name. Hello, Spokane Valley, Washington. Hello to my friends all over this country, everywhere and around the world. I am so grateful to meet you. Hello to our moderators, Jill, Mary, Carrie, and Samantha. Welcome to the show, ladies. We've got a big one. When you go fishing, you try and catch a big fish, right? That's kind of the old the old saying. So why don't we bring the big fish in here? I'm going to need to make one change before we, I mean, when we get him on, and that's the name. I was able to get everything done today. Keep in mind, three shows today. Three shows, okay? Here's the first. We have a special edition of this program coming on at 3.30 p.m. Eastern with Deputy J.J. Johnson from Williamson County, Texas, letting you... Say, welcome back. Yep. Then at 7 p.m. East, the YouTube with Friends show. Today is cartoon trivia. We wish you good luck on that one, my friends. All right. Let me get Corporal Craig Malone. i got to change the name on the screen for him. But here he is. On a canoe trip of all things, we've never had this done before in the history of ever. In the history of ever, ladies and gentlemen, there he is. Corporal James Craig Mile. Welcome to the show, brother. How are you guys? We are great, man. We are awesomely happy to see you, brother. How are you? We've missed you, good. man. Um, yeah, we uh I'm having to drive to a different location here. Luckily, I'm not on the main road. We're just on uh an outer road access down here. But yeah, we're gonna go canoeing today. So you guys might uh you might get to join in on the canoe. How cool is that? Wow, we've never had that before. I was just telling him, never had that before, and that is really stinking cool. We're grateful to have him here. Thank you. We got to go on a little canoe trip, everybody. Aha. Absolutely. I'm just hoping. I'm hoping that I don't flip it. <laughs> now that'd be cool. That because be if I do, you guys cool. are going in the water with me. There you go. Is the water still pretty cold over there? Well. Let me tell you about this. Uh, we are over here at Lake Taney Como uh, down in Branson, Missouri, which is the entertainment capital of uh, Missouri here. Uh, it's where my grandparents' theater is. It's where I work at now. And uh, the lake is spring-fed. So Ooh, if anybody knows anything cold. about spring-fed lakes, cold. that means that this lake <laughs> is freezing. It is cold, man. Holy cow. Year-round freezing. So... Oof. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how we fare. Hopefully, we don't end up in the water. Oh boy, no kidding. Hello, Asheville, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us. It's really a pleasure to have you here. 
truly is. Corporal Craig Mao, we've got lots of people saying we just love you. Brandon from Arizona says, hi, Corporal. I love How your you, truck. How are you, Brandon? I love your truck. Have you taken it off-roaded recently? Any off-roading? I, I have not done off-roading yet, no. Um, but it, the intentions are to go off-roading at some point in time. But, yes, I, uh, I, I love my truck. <laughs> well, there you go. I think you should. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful truck. truck. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Another question here from Middle Tennessee. Lee Terry asks, are Gracie and Olivia going with you to the canoe? Uh, Gracie and Olivia are not. I'm going to do good just to keep the canoe afloat, <laughs> let alone having to worry about the dogs. <laughs> uh, and I, we'll... Uh, I'm going to go down this hill here. I'll show you guys if we get down here what the water looks like. But, yeah, the water is cold. Um, you can uh, – it, this water is great for learning how to water ski because you don't stay in it long. You will get up and you will stay up. <laughs> Fast. Fast. It is, it is entirely funny. too cold to That's stay in it. That's funny. We've yeah. got a great question from Jill Bamai. It ties into something we, you and I talked about previously. Jill Bamai from Canada – she asks, so tell us a bit about what you've been up to, some of your exciting projects. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I've got quite a few projects uh, in the works right now. I've got um, a new show called Dark Ozarks that I'm going to be hosting. Uh, we are in um, pre-production right now. Unfortunately, the coronavirus has halted a lot of uh, production and, and footage and stuff like that, but... Uh, I ended up hosting that, and then actually I got contacted by a company overseas, a production company, to do uh, hosting a, a new show that they are working on for the United States here. So I'm pretty excited about that. I can't tell details on it yet, uh, but once all the contracts are signed and everything is done, then I'll be able to talk a little bit more about it. But uh, that'll be exciting for what's upcoming. How cool is that? Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Live with Corporal James Craigmile, Green County, Missouri. Someone we grew to love on Live PD. He's a legend, folks. This guy's a living legend right here, you're seeing. And you're seeing him out and about. And Jeanette Posler from Oregon says, yeah. Corporal Craigmile, don't drop your phone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if, I, if I end up dropping my phone, you're going in with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Ask your questions on the screen if you'd like, or you can give us a call. The phone number's on the screen, 503-420-4062, 503-420-4062. Jill Bamai, she says, tell us what it was like working on America's Top Dog. How was that experience for you? You know, it was fun. Um, I... I, w I helped uh, consult for the for the for the canine group, um, and you know, it, it, Big Fish is just amazing to work with and and to help do stuff and you know, being able to help out with uh, the renderings and the helping out with the canine safety and and doing all that stuff. You couldn't have asked for a better group. It was it was fun going out there, uh, and then you know, taking it from ground zero and what they were doing and the concepts and the ideas that they had, and then. Uh, going out there and seeing it finally built, seeing how everything was put together. Uh, mm -hmm. That was just, it was amazing to see that, to see that work. Cause you know, you, you see um, American Ninja Warrior and you see, um, oh gosh, some of these other reality shows and, and you're just like, oh, you know, how does that get, where's the concept come from? How does it work? How is it put together? And then all of a sudden you see it happen and it was great. Um, great contestants uh, come out of it. And, you know, the good thing about it is um, a lot of people, whenever they go into a competition, sometimes it's friendly, sometimes it's not. You know, there's always going to be a winner and there's always going to be a loser. But the good thing with law enforcement is we're all a brotherhood. It doesn't matter, male, female, canine, captain, lieutenant, sheriff, police chief. We're all a brotherhood. And you should have seen the camaraderie between all of the contestants, whether they won or lose. It, it was just it was amazing to see the camaraderie with everybody. So wow. it, uh, it's a good show. I don't know, you know, the coronavirus has halted everything right now, so I don't know what uh, is going on with season two yet, but um, it was great. I had a blast. That's awesome. We're live with Corporal James Cragmouth from Greene County, Missouri, everybody. The real deal right there.
Gary so asks, where, what's that? Where's our farthest viewer from? Well, it looks like right now, from where you are in Missouri, I would say probably Pennsylvania. No, uh, upstate New York. Oh, upstate good. New York. Yep, upstate New York. So that's the farthest one away from you right now. And I, I can tell you they're asking tons of questions, tons of questions. Let me get to them because it's about the fans and getting to know you better. And Jeanette Posler from the state of Oregon says, nice to see you get up and about and have some fun. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. Samantha Steele asks from um, just outside of New Mexico. She's right like New Mexico, Texas border. How old are Grace and Olivia? Uh, Gracie just turned a year old and Olivia is almost three years old. Well, there you they go. are, they are a handful. They, they, <laughs> I tell you what, I, I have had many breeds of dogs in my life. I've had everything from a schnauzer to a dosh hound or a wiener dog. I've had huskies. I've had shepherds, uh, French bulldogs. I have trained different types of dogs, uh, in my career and, probably some of the biggest personalities are the French Bulldogs. Oh, There's yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Which, which you know, I, I started uh, during this whole coronavirus, I started some YouTube videos to help people uh, train their dogs. So trying to keep more dogs out of the shelters and uh, keep them with keep them with their humans and stuff. Man, that water is freezing. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is like, look, at him. look at him. <laughs> <laughs> This is worse than like, this is worse than the polar bear plunge I did last year. <laughs> so, We've got a phone call for you, my friend, all the way from Canada. Jill Bamai. Eh? Yep, Canada, eh? Jill Bamai from Ontario. Tell us what you'd like to tell Corporal James Craigma, my friend. Well, hey, welcome to the show, and hope things are going well for you. And you know, Twitter, that's what they work. Um, my question is. Uh, when, when you were with Green County, uh, I, I don't know what to say about those jalopies that you guys are always going over. And honestly, I don't think they would ever pass the safety inspection up here. What are some of the most ridiculous kinds of cars that you pulled over? I think you've probably seen them all on live PD, but do you want to talk about that for a bit? Oh, wow. Great question. Yeah. Um, so some different cars, you know, it. it it's unfortunate. Um, a lot of these cars that you see that um, are not up to par or up to state regulations, it's unfortunate because a lot of those people are down on their luck. They don't have a lot of money to fix them. Yeah. Uh, they don't have a lot of money to take care of them. Or they're choosing to put their money into drugs or into other things rather than fixing up their vehicle, which is yeah. a mode of transportation to get to work back and forth. So. Yeah. Uh, probably some of the, some of the weirdest, you know, we, we have a lot of people that, uh, will tie strings to their windshield wipers and they will from inside the vehicle, pull the string back and forth to clear their windshield as they're driving down the road. No um, way. Are you serious? You know, you get, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. That wow. happens a lot. Wow. Uh, you'll get people that'll have all of their side windows wrapped in plastic, the back window wrapped in plastic, and they'll oh. end up thinking that that's legal whenever they clearly can't see out of it, uh, which is oh. a safety hazard as well. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I've pulled over cars that have mismatching tires, want to be a 20 inch tire and want to be a 17 inch tire. And it's like, Oof. how do you, how do you manage to get that on a car? It, it just looks different, but, uh, mm -hmm. I do feel for those people, you know, some of those people, they can't afford to, um, maintain their vehicles. They're, they're living paycheck to paycheck or, yeah. Uh, disability yeah. to disability, and and it's unfortunate. I wish that there was better things that we could do for people, um, but unfortunately, some people do make uh, bad choices as well. So, yes, probably, yes. probably, probably the windshield wipers, you know, and and doing that. We've I've I've I, I have pulled over a car once that had um, flashlights as headlights because they couldn't afford their headlights. They couldn't fix. Oh them. man, that makes me yeah. sad. That makes me pretty sad. Yeah. Oh boy. Jill, was that, did that pretty much answer your question? Hey, thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, Thanks, Jill. Jill. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Jill Bamai from Ontario, Canada. Thank you very much for your phone call. If you'd like to call in and speak with Corporal James Craigmile, here's your shot. 503-420-4062. Lee Terry from Middle Tennessee asks, how's your grandma doing? 
she's doing good. The uh, coronavirus is really getting to her because, you know, she's 90. Uh, she's got uh, early stages of dementia. So um, she remembers a lot in the past. It's, it's the short term. So she doesn't quite understand why people don't come see her anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, she feels isolated and left out. You know, she's living at home by herself. And, um, you know, it just breaks my heart. But uh, we did a drive by for Easter. Uh, got to see her, got to tell her that I loved her. And, you know, I keep in contact with her on the phone. Uh, she's doing good. Once we get through this coronavirus, we're going to, uh, have a big, I don't know, Easter, Mother Day, Memorial Day, 4th of July. We're just going to wrap a bunch of parties into one and go have fun. So what a great I keep trying act. to get yeah. her to go bowling with me. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You know, and yeah. that's hard for elderly people because, the greatest gift you can give them isn't something in the store. It's your time. It and is. Yep. it's nice that you recognize that because a lot of people totally miss that point. Then the good Lord takes them home and they say, gosh, darn it. Anyway, Brandon yep. from Tempe, Arizona. How do you like working in the private sector after being in the public sector? Now you're still doing public sector work. I don't think a lot of people know that. Right. Yes. So I am still a deputy sheriff uh, here in the state of Missouri. Uh, But I also my main job now is the security manager for Hirsch and Family Entertainment um, here in Missouri. I'm in charge of the um, Ozark Mountain region here for their security department. And you'll find a lot of these uh, private sectors, you know, Disney World or Six Flags or or any of these big corporations like this. They are sucking up our law enforcement because we have some phenomenal training out there. We are trained by some of the best. We get the real world experiences. A lot of us have been in the military, so we end up getting all of the military experience that we have. You combine all that together and it ends up being a really good partnership with some of these companies. So I absolutely love working for uh, Hirsch and Family Entertainment. Um, but, you know, on the side, I can still go out and I can still chase bad guys and I can still, uh, you know, keep the citizens safe in the county and uh, do everything that I love doing previously. So I actually get the best of both worlds. Isn't that cool? Yep. I love that. A lot of people didn't realize that. So I'm grateful you yeah. brought that up. Thanks. Thanks very much. Carrie from Manitoba asks, did you have a favorite competitor on America's Top Dog? You know, I didn't. Uh, I, I, I like preferably the underdogs because I'm a canine trainer. So I train these police dogs. Uh, I know what the police dogs are capable of. What I like seeing is the underdogs, the people out there who take their own time and their own money, not paid by the taxpayers, not paid by, you know, some some foundation. The people who go out there and get their dogs and they train their dogs on their own. That's what I like. I like seeing that stuff. I like, wow. you know, Minion. Minion was one of my favorites. Minion was a cool little dog. I loved, I loved watching Minion run that course. Well, and I are think we ready it's to go cool. kayaking? <laughs> are we ready to go kayaking, everybody? What do you think? Yeah, I think I we're think ready. Can... We're not going to get cold. We got the best of both worlds here. Wow. Who? Oh. oh. Well, we got a question here from Middle Tennessee. What was your favorite yeah. part of the America's Top Dog course? What did you like best about the course? I liked the Boneyard. In particular, the reason I like the Boneyard is because it's outdoors. If anybody knows anything about wind currents and knows anything about air movement, that Boneyard was put together with basically just slats. So you constantly had the air current moving through the Boneyard, which makes it difficult for a dog to pinpoint that odor so as you saw in the rooms you saw the different locations in there that wind could be moving across a tissue box over onto a lamp and the dog indicates on the lamp and it was actually a tissue box so it makes it a little bit more difficult it makes the handler go home do their homework and understand air current and movement and you know some handlers they don't get that training they don't understand that Um, so I think that this show is really opening up people's eyes as to what we do on a daily basis in training and how we deploy our dogs and how that course was applicable to real life scenarios. Fantastic. That's great stuff. Live with Corporal James Craigmile from Green County, Missouri. Your phone call, if you'd like to say hi, 503-420-4062. 
Kathleen Roberts, greetings from Sweet Home, Alabama. Hello, Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Kate Marshall asks from upstate New York, how hot is it where you are? Lancaster, New York is still cold. It is 86 degrees right now. Oh, my goodness. That is that is some serious canoe weather right there. Absolutely. Wow. Um, there you go. A lot of questions coming in here regarding your time on America's Top Dog. Some repeats, um, which is really kind of neat to see how people are thinking today. One of the things, Cammie Miller, she, she talks about, and I'm going to change the question. Is there something you miss most about being with Greene County full time? Uh, the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Being with the guys. Um. You know, it was fun. It was, it was fun going out and um, protecting the citizens. You know, you hear a lot of people say, oh, it's fun going out and getting the pursuits, and it's fun going out, you know, kicking in doors and stuff like that. Yeah, that stuff is all fun, but it, in the end, you're doing that stuff to protect the citizens. Yes. So, yes. you know, to, to protect somebody who calls you for help, who may not know what they need to do or, or may not know how to fix an issue that they have at home, being able to go out there and give them that little bit of information is it's good. Absolutely. And you know what? You did a great job of it. You do a great job of it. You really do. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. Lee Terry, she asks about America's top dog. How do you think that Cato and deputy Duvall did in the boneyard? I think they did good. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the scenarios run together. Oh, I'm stepping in the water. It's cold. A lot of the, a lot of the scenarios run together, um, but um, I know Deputy Duvall personally. I, uh, I I've been to training with him. We went to Chicago together and went through training, um, and we still keep in contact today. And you know, we bounce ideas off of each other because the same thing that we see here in Missouri, they'll see down in Texas, or they'll see out in South Carolina, or they'll see in California. It's the same people. It's the same type of stuff. It's just the people changing up things. So. We all bounce ideas off of each other. We talk to each other. We help each other out. And, um, you know, I thought uh, I thought that Deputy Duvall did great. I think all of them did great. You know, there's always room to improve yourself, and there's always room to improve training. And that's what we have to work towards is being able to be a big person, identify your weaknesses, identify your faults, and fix them. Amen. Amen. Yep. Yeah. Some of the best things you can get. In life as advice, it teaches us the greatest lessons, the greatest lessons for sure. Linda Absolutely. Broyles, she says, I love seeing Gracie and Olivia. <laughs> there you go. Everybody does. Yep. She also asks, how is Corporal Haynes doing? Um, I've not talked to him since I left, but uh, I've, I've seen uh, some of his social media posts and he seems to be doing good. Very good. Cammie Miller from Spokane, Washington area says, what's some of the best excuses you've ever heard. Okay, besides, these are not my pants, okay? <laughs> as far as finding drugs on a person or in a car? Let's say... Or just a traffic stop. Whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to pick. Um, I had an excuse once. I went to stop a truck, and the truck started swerving all over the road. Whenever I got my spotlight put up there on it, I noticed that the driver and the passenger were switching. So what I mean is the passenger ended up on the driver's seat, the driver ended up on the passenger seat. So Uh I get them pulled over. I ask them why they switched while they were driving. And they said, well, because I didn't have a driver's license and I had a warrant and I knew he was going to take me to jail. And that's (laughs) like, well, so you're going to put people's lives at risk by switching in the middle of driving. That makes no sense. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. I have, uh, I have <laughs> on multiple occasions stopped people that said that they were in a hurry to get to the hospital. And when you ask them what their medical condition is or if there's something wrong with them so you know you can call an ambulance to them, uh, all of a sudden they feel better. And uh, oh. they don't want a ticket now. They're sorry for speeding. So, uh-huh. you know, nobody wants to get caught doing something wrong. Nobody wants to get caught lying. Um, so, you know, they, uh, they end up coming up with some story that doesn't make any sense. There you go. Yep. That's, that's funny. 
Lee Terry asks, what is your dream car or dream truck? What would you love to own having the Craig Mile dynasty? What would that be? Uh, I don't have a dynasty, but I'm driving my dream truck. I've got my Raptor. There you go. Yeah. And if you know much about the Ford Raptor trucks, you know why they're special. <laughs> and it's a Ford. That's why. Yeah. Any modifications done to it? I got to ask. Yeah, I'm a car guy. Uh, no, no modifications yet. No, I don't. Well, I don't need to. Mine has everything on it that I need. Well, there you go. So I, don't, see a... I, don't, I don't have a reason to modify it at all. Yeah, a guy that's already happy with what he has, what more do you want? That's pretty Absolutely. cool. That's pretty cool. All right, moving on to all the comments here, which are fantastic here. want to welcome Karen German to the show. Karen, thank you for joining us. Very, very grateful to see you. That's really sweet. All right, we got a call in here for you. See where it's from. See what's going on for you, my friend. And it just dropped. So, you know, it happens. Jeanette Posler asks from the state of Oregon, do you have trouble with tornadoes in your area? And how does your department deal with it? Yes. So we do have tornadoes in Missouri. The best way that we deal with it is um, getting information from the National Weather Service, constantly monitoring that. And then we, uh, we end up putting, it's the same way in the entire state, we end up putting deputies strategically throughout the county and we monitor for any type of tornadic activity. All of the deputies go through a national weather spotter course. Uh, so we understand what the cloud formations look like. We understand what wall clouds are and we monitor it, you know, and then if we have a touchdown, the citizens will usually call us and tell us if they've got a rotation. They'll tell us if there's a touchdown and then we respond to the area. Uh, last year we had a tornado touchdown out in Rogersville, right outside of uh, Springfield here and destroyed quite a few homes. So we just assemble a team together and we go out there and we make sure that uh, the citizens first are okay. And then we start assessing damage and then we start securing properties and making sure that nobody comes in because as soon as something happens like a tornado or an earthquake or any natural disaster and there's any type of um, effects that are damaged like homes or cars or stuff, that's whenever you have all these thieves that come out of the woodworks and they want to loot and they want to start stealing stuff. It happened in Joplin. You know, we've had it was a huge devastation of a tornado that came through back in 2000. I think it was 11. Uh, I worked at tornado. I was with green County at the time we went down and secured the area. And we have people that are out there stealing stuff from people oh, and you know, they just lost everything. Oh God. So, That's that just makes me sick. That makes me just angry as heck. It really does. Wow. Karen German. First question. Here you go, Karen. Way to, way to go. Way to go, girl. She says, how much time have you spent as a deputy sheriff with Greene County? Uh, I was there a total of 16 years. 16 years. And folks, yep. he's still doing it. That's the cool part. That's the cool part. All right. Phone number to call in if you'd like to say hello to him. It's on the top of the screen here. It's 503 420 503 Four two zero four zero six two, and the phone shall ring. Hi, you're on Leo's Coast to Coast with Corporal Craig Mile. Who's this, and where are you calling from? Hi, this is Samantha from Texas. Hi, Samantha from Texas. What would you like to talk to Corporal Craig Mile about? So, I was just wondering, like, whenever you guys do the canines, is, do you guys get to pick the names, or is it? the department or does it just depend on what department it is yeah how are you so the so that's a good question um like my dog lore he came with the name loris l-o-r-i-s i I changed it to l-o-r um some agencies allow the handlers to choose their name some agencies want to choose the name some will put it out there for the citizens in the community to help decide the name because essentially that dog is an extension of us in law enforcement. So that dog is there to protect the community. That dog is there to serve a purpose and to do a job for you guys to make sure that you're safe. So a lot of times it's great to get the citizens involved on selecting a name for the dog. The dogs always come over with a name. Whenever we go to select dogs, they'll have some name, whatever it is, Zeus or, or whatever dog name that you can think of. And then we can either change it or we keep it. There you go, Sam. Yeah. Isn't that something? I did not know that. 
not know that. <laughs> there you go. All right, did you answer the question okay, or do you have something else for Corporal Craig Mao? Uh, that's it. <laughs> All right, well, Jill, we thank you for your – Jill, wow, Samantha, my scorekeeper, how could I ever forget you, girl? <laughs> my gosh, forget your name. Samantha, thanks for calling, kiddo. Appreciate you. Thank you, Samantha. Bye. All right, there you go. So it's as easy as that if you want to talk with Corporal Craig Mile. That was a great question, too. How do the dogs get their names? So pretty cool. Cammy Miller asks, my grandma, she says, my grandma's turning 100 on the 14th. This social distancing is taking a toll on a lot of people, but we'll all get through it together. And I love how she put together in caps. Absolutely. How much has this affected law enforcement there in Greene County? How Have you noticed, like, what kind of changes have you had to deal with there? Well, as far as Greene County, I don't know. Um, but law enforcement in the state, you know, we've, we've uh, a lot of us have gone to mask in the proper PE whenever we're stopping cars. Um, and also understanding social distancing. Um, you know, it, it's just... It's a little bit different because we still have to go to calls for service. We still have to protect the community and the citizens. So we don't get that luxury of sometimes that six feet rule because we're having to arrest somebody or we're having to go hands on with somebody. So it's a little bit different for us. Um, I think that's why you see a lot of law enforcement agencies out there that ended up with uh, the coronavirus because we're, we're not able to maintain that distance. Yeah, that would make it a big deal. And, I know we had Inspector Soroka on here a few weeks ago, and he said that they're letting some crimes, which are technically they're misdemeanors, you have like a taillight out or a license plate light out. They're letting those cars go. As long as they're not being stupid, they'll let them go because in all honesty, it's not worth the risk of coming up to the car and getting sick. Is that right. something that's happening there in Missouri as well now? They're kind of a little lax on things to say for safety purposes, but if you're being stupid, you're going to get pulled over and you'll be in real trouble. Yeah. You know, if you're doing something like uh, drinking and driving, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to end up having to go to jail for that because you can't drink and drive. That's just illegal. Um, you know, all the other stuff is illegal too, but it's something that is an infraction that you can really look over. Um, but you know, if, if you're out there putting the public at risk by drinking and driving or doing drugs um, or playing roller derby with somebody, then yeah, you you deserve a, a ride to the jail. So sure as heck do you sure as heck do. If, yeah. If you're going to, if you're going to do something stupid, especially during a pandemic like this, we've never seen, you know what? You better be behind bars because you've got a problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lorna Jennings. Yep. Hi, Lorna. Welcome to the show. It's an honor to have you join us today. Lorna's new. She has a great question. She says, got a haircut yet james <laughs> i did get a haircut yeah but it's all it's all like a mess now look but at that you know it doesn't matter what your hair looks like when you go kayaking or rafting it just doesn't matter it doesn't nobody cares yeah, nobody cares i mean it's just you're about having fun that's all it's about again the phone number yes. to call in 503-420-4062 503-420-4062 Four zero six two to speak with Corporal James Craigmel. Last time I'll give the phone number out. He's got a great day of enjoyment and much deserved relaxation today. And we want to make sure he gets that, okay? So this is a real gift and a blessing to have him back here on the show. It really is. This is you know what? This is your third time on our show. This is number three. Is it really? It is. Is that yeah. a record? And you are tied now with Danny Brown and Tom Morris Jr. for three. Yep. I'll be back on tonight. I'm going to beat that record. <laughs> it's awesome, man. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Danny so, Brown ain't got nothing. There you go. I want to. I want to share the story. We want you to share the story. You helped coordinate an incredible event that guys still talk about. I speak with Dave Moreno. He brings it up. I speak with Danny Are they still Brown. Talking about it? He brings it up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And they're talking about the big Green County event. We'll get back to that in a second. We've got a phone call here from one of our folks that wants to have the honor of saying hello. Just a moment. Hi, you're on Leo's Coast to Coast with Corporal James Cragmile. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hello, Larry. This is Cammy from Spokane. How are you? I'm good, Cammy. How are you? You're live with Corporal Cragmile. Hello, sir. I'm good. How are you, ma'am? Good. 
So I've got a question. Yep, go right Ask ahead. the speed that you've gone trying to uh, chase somebody. Ooh, fastest speed you've had to go to catch somebody. Ooh. The fastest speed I've had to go or the fastest speed I have gone? The has to... <laughs> the, the ha oh, she, she says now the fastest speed you've gone. Uh, It'll be 185. Uh, 185? Yes. Oh. Unless... So I, I'm still trying. So I, I'm still trying to get my buddies at Mark Harmon Racing to let me drive their, their to drive their race car. So then you know it could be over 200. But as of right now, it's 185. And and you need to know, okay, this that's not safe. I don't recommend anybody doing that. Yeah, the, he was on a closed track here. Okay, he's he's being safe. Right. Yeah, <laughs> this is not like on Missouri's you know interstate. He's 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 careful. So this guy this guy is sharp. He knows what he's doing. 185. Wow. Well, you guys be blessed. Have a wonderful day. And, and Corporal, thank you for your service, sir. Oh, thank you, ma'am. You have a good day. Bye-bye bye, now. Bye. Bye, Cammie. Will do. I will. Thank you, Cammie. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, so oh, that's a great call. Thank you from Spokane Valley, Cammie Miller. That's great. All right, so, yeah. <laughs> Moreno said he was going to call today. Still waiting, David. Um, and, of course, you know, you talk to Danny and same thing. <laughs> and I always ask him, so did you guys build, like, a fort there in his house or something, you know? And Moreno's like, we did. We did build a fort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk about a sleepover. Oh, and yeah. So uh, <laughs> during that event, um, Mike Baker and uh, Moreno and McElwain all stayed the night at my house. And uh, it was a good time. We had, we had fun. Um, later on, Danny Brown came in. Danny Brown came over to the house and hung out. Um, we're just, uh, you know, although we are many states away and many hours away, we are all really good friends, and we all like hanging out. And we all have the same interest, you know. Whenever, whenever you see... Um, Danny Brown and Mike Baker and I, uh, Gavin Wamsley and Donnie Campbell, uh, we all go to the races. We all love NASCAR. So we all were trying to make a big life PD uh, event at a NASCAR track one time to have all of us that have been there before. But um, I haven't made it to a track yet with Baker. That's our plan. My plan is to make it to a track with McElwain and with Sheriff Lamb. Um, I was hoping for this year. We'll see what NASCAR does with allowing fans back in. But yeah, it's fun. We we all get together. We all have a blast. We we just enjoy each other's company. And that's cool. You know, it's these guys would never have met if it wasn't for the show. But what's right. really cool is the the connection, the closeness that these guys have, and they stay in touch. They really do. So. Oh yeah, we talk. Yeah, we talk weekly. There you go. See, staying in touch. That's pretty cool. Karen German says, "I'm in Kansas City." So I'm feeling the same doggone heat. So there you oh, go. Yeah. There you go. I All like right. it though. I would rather I'd rather be hot than cold. You know, I would too. I would I would too. I like warm weather. I like it because it doesn't last forever. But you better enjoy it while you got it, right? Yes. Jill Bamai. Yeah, you know, people need to be getting outside. Stop staying inside. Yes. Get out, get out, Amen. Enjoy the outdoors. Stop staying Amen. cooped up. Hey, flipping men right there. I love it. That I love. All right. Question here. Are you planning to do any more dog training videos on YouTube? Yeah, I'll do some. I'm just, you know, I, the main goal on doing those videos was to make sure that the dogs stay out of the shelters because everybody's cooped up inside for months now and they think, oh, I want a puppy. So then they go get this puppy and then the puppy comes home and the puppy starts chewing on things. The puppy uses a bathroom in the house. The puppy isn't listening. And all of a sudden, I don't want puppy anymore. So they put puppy in the shelter. Mm -hmm. They give the puppy away. They put the puppy out on the streets. And it's not the puppy's fault. It's not the dog's fault. Whether it's a puppy or whether it's a three-year-old dog or whether it's a rescue from uh, a 10-year-old dog. You know, it's not their fault. So if I can teach these guys how to train their dogs and how to keep the dogs out of the shelters, then that's my goal. And that, look at that, right there. That's who that man is right there. That's who he is. 
He's got that kind of a heart. Now, Karen German up in Kansas City, she has this question for you. We've asked it. We kind of went through it before, but I'd like to make sure she gets the answer, okay? She says, yeah, do you absolutely. work with the Greene County Canines still? I'm sorry, one second. Then. I'm sorry. She asked if you still wet. work with the Greene County Canines still. I, I do talk to them, yes. I talk to their uh, head trainer up there, and uh, I still talk to the canine handlers and... I'm sorry, I got all that cold, nasty water in my mouth. People are, people are trying to be funny and splashing me over here. Um, oh, so, yeah. Uh, you know, but I, I keep in contact with a lot of handlers across the U.S., so it's good. We're, we're all one tight brotherhood. That's very good. All right, we got one more call, then we're going to let you go. Hi, you're on Wales Coast to Coast Show with Corporal James Craigmile. He's about to get soaking cold wet. Who is this and where are you calling from? And I was calling for myself and also for Linda from East Tennessee. And we wanted to thank you for being on the show. And also to ask, um, what do Gracie and Olivia, like, what are their favorite things to do and the differences in their personalities? Um, yeah, so Olivia, she's, uh, she's she likes to bite. I've taught her to bite. I taught her a bite command. So she bites people in the nose whenever I tell her to. It's funny. She's my little attack dog. Uh, so I'll tell her to go bite and she'll run up and she'll bite you on the nose. She doesn't bite hard. It's just a little nibble just playing. But it's funny to watch her do that. And Gracie, Gracie is the bully. So Gracie goes after the other dogs. She'll go after them and play with them and want to tackle them. And, but then in the same sense, she'll turn around and she'll sit there and bathe them. So she's got that like, motherly instinct in her. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they sleep a lot, uh, but they love to be in your lap and they love to cuddle. And I don't know. I think that's what I like most about them is they're just fun. They'll play with each other. And then the next minute they'll sit there and they'll lick on each other and then they'll play fetch and they'll play with toys. And Olivia, anytime that there's an animal on TV, she tries to attack the TV. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's cute. Oh, yeah. that's cute. Oh, did you get so, the answer? Okay, Lee, or you have something else? I did. Thank you. And just one last. Um, thing, um, go screaming yes. eagles. Go screaming eagles. Absolutely. Oh boy. That's what that there is. we go. There we go. Yep. Thanks, Lee. That was, uh, that was my first combat patch that I earned in the army. Whenever we went over to Afghanistan, um, I spent a year in Afghanistan and then uh, a year in Iraq. So this was my combat patch that I got from Afghanistan. So I wanted to be, it didn't matter to me which combat patch it was, but I wanted the first one as a tattoo. So I did that one. Congratulations, and thank you for serving our country, sir. Thank you very much. Well, thanks. There's a couple other questions I want to get to because I do believe that you'll like them. First of all, Tammy Basham. Hello, my friend. She's from the state of Texas. Thanks for joining the show. She asks, how is production of Dark Ozarks proceeding? I'm anxiously awaiting it. Production is going slow. Uh, we are, we are in pre-production right now and we are hoping to start filming here in the next couple of weeks. There you go. All right. And final question. We want to let him get into the boat. Okay. <laughs> He's been walking yeah, I so one long. Of these canoes here. There we go. Mary Pluff. When you make arrests, are they mostly, do you find it men or women? It. It varies, honestly, dependent upon what they did. Um, you know, it just, it just depends. Uh, the I would say the majority of them are men. Okay, there you go. Folks, I'd love to get to all the questions, but this man's been kind enough to allow us to do the show from the lakeside before he has some much-deserved enjoyment. And I want to thank him from the bottom of my heart for that. Corporal Craig Mel, as always, you are top notch, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Very hey, get much. me on there. You better. You need to have me on there before you get Danny Brown or Tom Morris back. On. <laughs> okay. I have to have the record. Okay. All right. All right. We'll do it. We'll do it. That would be an absolute honor to have you back, my friend. It really would be, folks. We've been live with Corporal James Craig Mel, but before we let him go, I'd like him to have the opportunity to share his thoughts and feelings with the fans of Live PD. Go right ahead, sir. Yeah, we, um, 
you know, I'm just thankful for everybody that supports law enforcement. You know, we don't set out to be some uh, Hollywood movie star or anything like that or expect any accolades from anything that we do. But it's nice coming from an era where the police were extremely hated and law enforcement was really uh, put in a bad negative light. Uh, when, you know, we're only doing our job, we don't we don't set out to to ruin people's lives. We get called whenever they need us. So it's really great to see the support and the love that we have from people all over the world. I get I get emails from all over the world, from from Japan to Australia to Greece to United Kingdom and Canada. Um, sometimes I don't know what they're saying. I get the translate button. But, um, you know, it's great to, to have the support from everybody. And we just greatly appreciate it. We hope that you keep it up. Get out there in your communities and help out. Help law enforcement out. You know, go go tell an officer thank you. Uh, we don't expect anything from anybody. We don't expect anything free. No gratuities. We just uh, we love what we're doing. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. Corporal James Craig Mal, very good, very good. I'm going to end with this because Linda Broyles tried so hard to get through, and I know she yes. did. I wanted to just yeah. tell you, tried to get through on the phone. Tell Corporal Craigmall hello from East Tennessee. There you go, Linda. There you go. Oh, thank you, Linda. Hello. All right. We've had Corporal James Craigmall live on Leo's Coast to Coast. Join us at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have a treat for you. Yep, Deputy J.J. Johnson from Williamson County, Texas, will be taking your questions live. Wow. So join us again. Thank you to Corporal James Craigmall for putting us into his day of fun and answering yes, your questions. Yes, thanks for having me on, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll see you guys at 330 East. Until then, be good people. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching the Leo's Coast to Coast show. My friends, we will see you in about 45 minutes. Until then, God bless you. Bye-bye.